Let's talk about a way of solving systems of equations um, using what's known as the addition method. So we're, what we're going to do is we'll go through how to solve a system using the addition method and then we'll talk about when you might want to use this method over another method like let's say the substitution method or something like that. All right, so here, here's the steps that we're going to go through. So you're going to take your equations in your system, and the first thing you have to do is write them in what's called standard form, uh, assuming that they're linear equations. What that means is putting your x's and then your y's equal to your constants. And if you have both equations written in that standard form, it'll look something kind of like this. Now, the underlying thing that, that we really want to have happen is we're really just trying to get our x's in a column, our y's in a column, and our constants in a column. You know, just between us, it doesn't really matter what order they're in. You just can't have x, y in one equation, and then y, then x in the other equation. They have to be in nice, neat columns. All right, so let's say our system is already set up like that is they'll often give it to you in that form. The next thing we're going to do is the key step. This is this is what's unique about the addition method. Um, what we'll do next is we're going to try to force the coefficients for either the x or the y, it doesn't matter which one you pick, to be the same numerical value but have opposite signs from one another. So for, for example, let's say you're going to try to do this with the x's. You know, your x's in the first equation might be, let's say, maybe like 4x. And in the second equation, you would really try to make it equal to negative 4x. That's the same numerical value 4, but one's a positive 4, one's a negative 4. That's, that's really what, what you're after in step 2 here. Now, you might be asking, well, well, Devin, how do you know if you're supposed to do that for the x's or for the y's? Well, actually, the problem will more often than not tell you what, what way you need to go on that, and I'll clarify that more when we actually get into an example. All right, now, once that's done, then we'll move on to the third step. The third step says that we're going to add both sides of the equation together. So most of the time, people will draw a, a line like this with a plus sign, and then you're going to add the x's, you're going to add the y's, and then you're going to add the constants on the other side of the equation. And what's going to happen is, because of step two, when you add either the x's or the y's, whichever one you made the coefficients line up, because they have opposite sign, that particular variable will be eliminated. So the 4x and negative 4x, when you add those, they would go away. And so in the sum, you would only have y's now. You wouldn't have x's anymore. So in fact, this, this method right here actually goes by a few different names. Uh, many people call it the addition method, but um, some textbooks will call it the elimination method for that reason. You're eliminating either the x's or the y's. So if you're used to calling it the elimination method, that's totally fine. That's totally normal. Um, I, I just happen to write it as the addition method for this video because that's also a common name for it. All right, now once that's done, you're gonna get an equation that doesn't have x's, like our example, and it will only have y's, and then just finish solving it out. It, sh it should be pretty clear where to go from there. Um, I, I didn't actually write out 18 different steps here. I only wrote three short ones. So once you add both sides of the equation, I just said, just, just in general terms, just solve the rest of it. And if that's unclear, you'll see when we get into an ex uh, actual example how to finish it out from there. All right, so a couple remarks, and then we'll actually move on to some examples. Um, first off, when would you use the addition method? Because the substitution method was a great method. That, that was a really good one. But you remember, in the substitution method, uh, it's best if one of the variables, x or y, in one of the two equations has a coefficient of 1. And so if in both of your equations, if none of the x's and none of the y's have a coefficient of 1, that would be a great time to use this new addition method. Um, so we're going to use this method if usually if none of the variables have a coefficient equal to 1. And as I said earlier, this guy is also often called the elimination method uh, as well as the addition method. All right, so let's try a couple of examples. We're going to go through uh, two, really two and a half examples. I'm not going to finish the third example, but um, we're going to go through uh, really two full examples. All right, the first one's going to be a, a light one, kind of an easier one, um, just so we understand the process. 
and then the second one's going to be a little bit more difficult. All right, so here we go. We have 3y minus 2x equals 4, and 5y plus 6x equals 16. Now, you know, this kind of looks like that standard form we had on the previous page. It's not x is then y is then the constants, but really that's fine because if you remember, what was the underlying thing that we really wanted to have happen? We wanted to have y's in a column, x's in a column, and constants in a column. So because the x's aren't coming first, that, that's not a big deal. So we're, we're actually just going to leave it this way. Um, and so next up, we're going to try to make either the x's or the y's, the coefficients of one of those, be the same numerical value, but have opposite sign. Now, that's not happening here. We have a 3, a negative 2, a 5, and a 6. So how do you change coefficients that are in one of these equations here? Well, you know, just basic algebra, if you have an equation, you can multiply the left side of an equation by anything you want as long as you also multiply the right hand side by that same value. So you can multiply the left side of the first equation by 2 if you wanted to and get 6y minus 4x equals 8. You could do that if you wanted as long as you did it fairly to both sides. So thinking like that, would it be easy to turn a 3 into a 5 by taking some multiple of it? I don't think so. You would get 3, then 6, then 9. You can't really easily turn that into a 5. What about a two? Could you turn that into a six? I think you could, right? So I think that that's gonna tell us what we need to do. We're gonna multiply this top equation by three so that when you distribute it, you get a six x, actually minus six x. Now a question for you, should this be a positive three that we multiply by or a negative three? Which one? Because I know there was some issue about the signs going on. Well, if it's a positive three, this is already minus 2x, so when you distribute, you would get negative 6x and positive 6x. That's perfect because they are the same number, 6, but they have opposite sign. One's a positive, one's a negative. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this equation, but I've got to do one thing first. I multiply the left side by 3. To be fair, I also have to multiply the right side by 3. So let's rewrite this down here we would have 9y, let me change colors so there's a little bit more dramatic difference. Let's see, 9y minus 6x equals 12, right? So this equation is equivalent to the first one. We simply multiplied both sides by 3. All right, so I'm going to mark out this equation just so it doesn't confuse us. So these are our two current new equations that we have. Notice the x's in particular, we have what we wanted earlier. Same coefficient, but with opposite sign. All right, so the next step is we are going to add these two equations together. So we're going to add the y's, add the x's, and add the constants. If you add the y's, you would get 14y. If you add the x's, they el are eliminated. Remember, I also called this the elimination method. This, these are eliminated and you get 16 and 12 make 28. Well, that's a much simpler equation that only has one variable. Obviously divide both sides by 14, you get y equals two. All right now we're not done, this is the y value, but remember solutions to systems have an x value and a y value. So how do you get the x value? Take any old equation, the blue or the yellow, it doesn't matter, I'll, I'll just take the first blue equation there. Plug in your known value for y. So we get 3 times 2 minus 2x equals 4. So 6 minus 2x equals 4. And solve for x. Negative 2x equals negative 2. To, uh, subtract 6 to the right. And so x equals 1. All right, so this is your solution to the system, the ordered pair one comma two. Um, you can check this by taking that order pair and plugging it back in the system. Um, two for y, one for x. So six minus two is four. That looks good. 
and 10 plus 6 does equal 16. Perfect. So we found the solution to the system using the addition method. All right, so let's go to a more difficult one now. All right, here we have 7x plus 2y equals 5, and 3x plus 5y equals negative 2. It's already in standard form, so there's nothing to do there. So I either need to make a 7 look like a 3, or a 3 look like a 7, or a 2 look like a 5, or a 5 look like a 2. It does, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one, our choice. Um, but we need to make one of those happen where one of them has the opposite sign than the other. But you see my problem, right? You can't take a multiple of 3 to get 7, or a multiple of 7 to get 3. And the same thing is true with 2 and 5 and 5 versus 2. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, it's actually perfectly allowed to multiply both equations by something so that the coefficients wind up lining up. Uh, you just might have to multiply the top equation by one number and the second equation by a different number. Um, so for example, I think you could multiply 7 by 3 and 3 by 7 and you get two um, terms of 21. You just need to make one of them negative. Or you can multiply 2 by 5 or 5 by 2. So really our choice doesn't really matter. Um, you can do the same one as me or you can do the different one uh, different one than me. And you'll notice we still get the same answer. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the y's. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 5, which will give us 10y. And we'll multiply the bottom equation by 2, which will also give us 10y. But I just need to make one of them negative. Doesn't really matter which one. I'll I'll make the second one negative. Okay. Now we need to rewrite both of these guys. So we'd have 35x plus 10y equals. Oh, we need to multiply the right sides as well. Top equation by five, bottom equation by negative two. So that's 25. This is minus. 6x minus 10y equals positive 4. Notice we have exactly what we want here, 10y and negative 10y. Draw a line. Add those two equations now. 35x plus negative 6x makes 29x. The y's get eliminated. And that equals 29. So divide both sides by 29. I think you get x equals 1. Very good. Almost done. Take that x. Go back and plug it in any old equation. Doesn't matter which one. I'll just do the first equation just, um, just because. So 7 times 1 is 7 plus 2 times y equals 5. Solve for y. I'll spare you the algebra. I think y would be negative 1. Okay, so the solution would be the ordered pair 1, comma, negative 1. And I'll leave it to you to check that that actually you know, makes both of the equations true. So that, that's our solution to the system. So hopefully you're getting a better feel for the addition method now. You're putting in standard form multiplying one or both equations by particular numbers to make the coefficients for either the x or the y line up. It doesn't matter which variable. Then you solve for that variable and then use your answer to find the um, what the other variable is equal to. All right, so um, just for time's sake, we're not going to wrap up. We're not going to completely finish the next exercise, but I'm at least going to start it with you and I'll let you finish it. All right, here we have a, a jumbled mess. 3x equals y plus 11, and 2y plus x equals 6. The problem is, is that's not in standard form. We can't start multiplying both sides by anything. It, first things first, we have to put this guy in the appropriate form. So to do that, it's just simple algebra. You're just shuffling terms around, subtracting things to one from one side to another, or adding them, that sort of thing. So let's, um, let's work on the top equation. We'll subtract the y to the left. We'd have 3x minus y equals 11. Hopefully you agree with me that that's the same as the first equation. And then for the second equation, 
um, I'll leave the 6 on the right hand side but I'm not going to put 2y plus x because then the x's and the y's won't be in the right columns. So I'm going to flip these guys around and write x plus 2y equals 6. So this would be your new system that you would actually go forward and solve, multiply, you know, one equation by a certain number or, or all those good things. I'll let you finish that out, but just I just wanted to show you an example of how you first of all write it in that standard form before you begin. So anyways, hopefully those exercises help you better understand how to solve a system using the addition method or what's also called the elimination method.